Karen Birchill, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel and another art journal tutorial. Here is a sneak peek of the finished page and the theme of this one is simplicity. Let's keep it simple. So I started by collaging down these teal, lime green, green, gel prints, collage papers. I had these on my desk. They were pulled out for another project, didn't use them. I had collected them all. I was gonna file them away because we don't throw anything out. And then I thought, you know what? Just put them on a page, even if that's as far as you go. It'll be the great start. These colors go together so well. Um, it'll be great. Now, if you don't have gel prints or specifically collage papers. You can rip out colored portions of a magazine, scrapbook papers, anything that has color on it that attracts you, that somehow goes together. And that's how simple it is. And why are we starting with this collage? Well, it's going to start my color story. In all likelihood, I'm going to end up going in the blues and greens and teals with this. And it's already made one decision for me. The other reason is it will add texture. These papers are different weights, so they layer differently. And even if they get covered with paint at a later stage, they will add interest to your page. I glued them all down with my fluid matte medium. This is a Liquitex Basics. I've used, also used the Liquitex Professional. Now, once this was done, I grabbed the yellow green and turquoise blue, and I'm just filling in the white spaces. As I said, it started my color story. <coughs> Excuse me. And now I'm just mixing this in. Sometimes I'm covering or going over the gel prints, but I, I really love them. So I really want that particular color story. You could also add white gesso at this stage a little bit, and that would add texture. It would mute down the colors. I didn't do that, but quite often I do. So you'll see me doing that in other videos. So in the theme of keeping it simple, we've basically used two colors. This the yellow, green, and turquoise, and maybe some Prussian blue is in there in some of the gel prints. And then we have added black and white. Now black and white gives you contrast and interest. And it's always going to work with every color scheme you've got going. So I mixed up my black paint, thinned it a little bit, and yes, I am painting it over top of the whole thing. Now here's the thing, that page is non-porous now because it has a coat, every bit of it has covered with paint. So in theory, when I put a stencil on this, I should be able to lift off the paint, through the stencil, as long as I work fairly quickly. I, I don't wanna let this dry and dry hard. So I'm using a baby wipe that I've kind of squished in a paper towel so it's not super wet and trying hard not to move my stencil. I want to see that bright green, that teal come through and leave the patterning of this leaf stencil. This is our uh, leaf Deco leaves, I believe. I'll put it in the description box and there will be some links to places that you can access TCW stencils. So I'm using the baby wipe, cleaning up the areas. Now, if you had used too, bit, too wet of a baby wipe, it tends to get wet. Now it kind of gives this imperfect look. Loving it, absolutely loving it, how that looked. Now I have these daisies out of that I got as a free printable sitting there again for a different project. And I thought, oh, so I threw one on here and I liked how it looked. It just reminded me of kind of like a, a pond and lily pads just had that overall feel and look to it. So I went and I cut out some more. And I just, you know, got as close as I could. It's not perfectly cut. I think I cut out way too many things as a teacher. 
but you don't need to watch me cutting them out. So once I had some, I kept throwing them on there and deciding, do I want three? Usually we go in odd numbers, three, five. I could have had one bigger one. And then I would have seen more of that background. And I'm thinking that might be something I would do on another canvas using that very similar technique of removing the paint through the stencil. I think that's the first time that it's really worked well for me. So I typed out or I stamped out the sentiment, choose simplicity, because that's what we're doing here. We've used one stencil, we are gonna use one more, two basic colors, and we're using white flowers. We're keeping it very simple. I think one of the problems that I run into sometimes, and I think beginners run into, is there's so many techniques and so many supplies, we tend to try to use too much on a single page. Edit yourself, limit yourself, and you'll be surprised at how effective your pages can be. So I'm using my wooden blocks, and I'm stamping with white acrylic paint. And on the side, I've spread the white acrylic paint with a palette knife, and I'm stamping into it, and then stamping on to the page. Now, I'm not trying to get this exactly perfect because I can't. And I've embraced the imperfection of getting it a little bit wonky. But as you can see, if you really don't like it, the spacing's not great, it do doesn't work as a stamp in that particular one, you do have time. You can come in with a baby wipe. I have one in my hand and wipe it off. I'm also wiping off the stamp, the acrylic paint that's on the stamp right after I stamp the letter. Because I want to keep my stamps as clean as possible. So now I'm finally ready to glue the focal image down on the page. I've played around a little bit, auditioning the various flowers, where I want them to be, spacing them differently. I want some of them to fall off the edge. So it's actually a partial flower. And again, I'm using my fluid matte medium. I love this stuff. It is remarkable. Yes, you can use Mod Podge or Decoupage. I prefer this. So in my world, it's worth the extra money, the difference in money. And if you get it on sale, I'm not so sure that it's that much more than Mod Podge. And I buy bigger containers of it because I go through more. And that brings down the price point as well. So Depending on how you do your art, if you find yourself doing a lot of collaging at the various stages, it may be worth the investment. I'll put a link to what I use in the description box below too, so you can actually see it. So when, if you go to the store, you will know exactly what you're looking for. But there are other brands other than Liquitex, but I don't know how they compare. But matte finish is really, really important. So once that's dry, I'm just trimming off the excess. And just FYI, this is in my seven by 10 Canson Mixed Media Art Journal. It's mixed media paper, it holds, it, ha it handles all the wet stuff and the layers that I throw at it. So it's a good basic one and it's not overly pricey. Now I wanted some of these letters to be a little bit more opaque. So I'm coming in with a liner brush and some white paint or white gesso that has been thin slightly, and I'm just filling it in to make it a little more opaque. But that's a personal decision. You may like the look of how it was, and you might decide to leave it as that. And you can definitely see it's not perfectly straight.
Now the secret when you're using liner brushes like this is to thin the paint somewhat. And every once in a while, if you do a lot of it, rinse off the brush and start back with a clean brush. Now, I did not like where this flower ended up. And I just thought, I'm going to show you that you can, if it's glued down with matte medium, with this stuff, if you spray it with water, and rub it off and you're very gentle and it's on all acrylic paint that is fairly dried. I, you can very slowly lift it up and get rid of it. Now, how much I ended up moving the flower wasn't really, it wasn't that necessary, but I left this in because I wanted to show you that that's possible. And I knew I was basically going to put a flower covering most of that anyways. It didn't get it off perfectly, but you would be hard pressed to tell that it was there. Once I've glued the other flower down, It did rip the page a little bit, or lifted the paint. So I came back and I just painted it with that color. So there are risks, but if you absolutely dislike something where it is, you have the ability to change it. So I'm loving the look of this. And I think we've got nightfall or something's happening here. And But I, as I'm thinking about it and looking at it and letting it sit there, I decide that I need a little something, something. And I was going to do white splatters, but then I grabbed this Shape Landscape stencil and I masked off the circle part and I'm adding some white circles to it. And it was a little too wet on the sponge, so it got a little messy, so I wiped it off. Now, the reason I can wipe things off is because that background is 100% acrylic paint. It's permanent. There, It's not watercolor. It's not anything that's water-soluble. And that's important. That's why I like using acrylic paints, because... It just gives me so many options down the road. And using acrylic paints is, you can do a lot of the same techniques and get a similar effect using them. And if you wanna check that out, you can check out my technique tag videos because I talk about um, in a lot of them using different mediums. So then I grab my fine line bottle. In here, I have white Liquitex Basics paint that has been thinned. And I do not have a recipe. I mix it and test it and mix it and test it. I do not add a lot of water. I do not fill the bottle right to the brim. I just mix up a little bit. A little bit lasts a long time. Here, I want a fairly broad line or thicker line. So I'm squeezing it and going a little bit slower than I normally do. Close-ups of the finished page are coming up. Check the description box for any links. Leave me a comment, share this with your video, and you know what? Go follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. Bye.